Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, agents. I am Monty Carl, and I have been waiting for this all day because after walking around E3, I am exhausted and still not done. I have many more places to go tonight and people to see. So, while I have this time, I have about three hours to kill. I should be sleeping, but what I'm going to do is give you all of the underground information that I have in one video, so let's get going. Alright agents, so we are just a couple weeks away from 1.3 and the new Underground expansion. I spent some time today playing and while I enjoyed it, my hard drive that I bought exactly for this trip uh, had some corrupted files so there's footage here and there and so you'll have to bear with me I just went ahead and used my old hard drive that I had some footage uh, of what looks like the underground but it's not really so sorry that I'm fooling you with that but I have some footage uh, still left over but for some reason uh, the file sizes I don't have my file size reducer that I use to optimize files with me so I can't really reduce the file size and I can't upload a 14 gigabyte file so I have to use what I got. So yesterday I posted a video saying that I was kind of eh, on the underground expansion, but now, now after I've sunk my teeth into it, I want more. Now the underground isn't like the incursion one or two, although there is the newest incursion dragon breath, which I didn't see. I know even littler about, but I know it has to do with the cleaners, but no, uh, I will hopefully have that information. I've been trying to talk with some people and get more information about dragon's breath, but I have not figured it out and I've not not talk to the right person but the underground the underground is awesome the underground is kind of like a pve dark zone but random it's a separate part of the game it's not the it's not tied in with the main part you go into the underground you get on a train and it takes you into a mission so uh it's got its own rank so you can go up to 30 and you queue up and you do randomly generated dungeons and may rng be with you because the ones I played were awesome but I can imagine that if you get the wrong set like if you get a Riker set and it's just shotgunners up the up the yin yang I'm sure that it's going to be a very hard time I would hopefully say that Riker uh, rioters are probably the ones you want the most but we'll just you know see what it says with that now the colors it's quite a bit gray uh, in the feeling was very dark in the underground so if you're claustrophobic uh, I would say that you're going to have a hard time with this because it's dark it's damp it's gray there's not a lot of light so it's subways it's sewers it's various other pieces that have been clipped together and it gave all of the undergrounds that I played a very unique feel now it's very much like what I think that the doom uh, level creator is like where you kind of snap pieces together and put them in place with these different rooms and stuff like that. Except they have hundreds of rooms and they're all randomly generated and none of them are the same. And the nine that I played, I played nine phases and uh, for a total of like three undergrounds and that's pretty much it. And none of them were, were the same. They were all different. They all had a different feel. It was very much uh, a unique experience for each of those. So let's talk dungeons. When you queue up, the leader of the group selects the mission and how many phases you're doing. There are three phases that I saw. So each one's a phase and that's when you complete the mission. So you do one, two, and three and then complete the mission. And there's four difficulties that you can do ranging from normal hard challenge and heroic and the, the level like it starts out I think at level 31 the ones that I did were level 32 and the developer that I talked to said it wasn't like they bump it up to like level 36 for heroic mode they just kind of uh, make it so that there's more enemies and they kind of like rush you a little bit more they have a little bit more of a tactic where they flank you stuff like that so talking with the devs I got the feeling that the max level is 34 but that they adjust different things to kind of do it so it's nice it's nice that they do that so after you finish a phase you can either move on to the next phase or choose to alter the difficulty at the hub uh, and kind of uh, add in a, a modifier or something like that so uh, think of the modifiers it's they're called directives and it's basically destinies nightfall multi modifiers halo skull system uh, which gives you different difficulties and stuff like that so uh, but there's five difficulty or five directives is uh, what it's called and I'll just really quickly run through 
each of those five directives. So um, let's see, what do we got? We got Fog of War, which removes the minimap, Waste Not Want Not, which reduces the starting ammo and eliminates any rounds left in the magazine when you uh, reload, Mad Skill, which makes it so that the skills trigger uh, the cooldown of the other skills. So you can use your healing, but it's going to uh, eliminate the uh, cooldown of the, you know, whatever other skill you have. Uh, they have special forces, which gives an enemies incendiary and explosive rounds and sickness, which gives you the health bleed over time during the map. So you kind of lose health uh, over time and you have to keep healing. So it sounds like it's fun, but uh, that health bleed doesn't sound like it's that much fun. So I am uh, definitely looking forward to trying some of those out. Uh, originally, I had thought that this was going to be a cleaners only expansion, where it was like the where the uh, the inc first incursion focused on the LMB, the second incursion focused on the Rikers, and it was kind of like told to me uh, early on that the underground would focus on the cleaners, that the cleaners went underground after Pharaoh died, and that they would be taking over and doing that stuff uh, to get like city's water system and stuff. But that's not true. Uh, all of the enemies are there. All of the random dungeons have random enemies. So I witnessed rioters, I witnessed LMB, and I saw cleaners down there. So everybody's down in the underground and having a good time, and it, they all have a part to play. Now, I'm still unsure how rank plays a part of it, but it seems like there's unlocks that you can do with directives and stuff like that that give you uh, different... Uh, abilities and stuff like that so if you're not ranked 30 you can't use all of the unlocks for directives and stuff which seem to boost your rank and give you better uh, equipment and stuff like that so uh, that's really where I think rank kind of comes into it and what you can do and stuff like that but you do need Intel to you don't need Intel to start the underground missions you need Intel to buy directives so that's where things are uh, you don't need Intel to start the missions once again you need Intel to buy directives that's what you need the intel for. And it's the same intel that we have uh, that we're currently using for HVT. Same intel. Hopefully they raise the, the min-max on it. Also, uh, one real quick important thing to note, they did raise the stash. Uh, limit so you now have 30 extra spots in the stash and that's always a good thing to notice uh, but I mean it's not as much as people were hoping for they're hoping for like 80 to 100 play, uh, pieces in the stash but no it's only 70 it's going to get bumped up to 70 I think it is so uh, that's always good to look forward to so let's get to the gear pieces that and weapons and stuff that you have been waiting for the 1.3 expansion comes with new gear sets and some very intriguing perks they look very trolly like things that you would use in the dark zone as opposed to things that you would use in, a, in an incursion or something like that. Uh, like the blind gear set, which gives the players the ability to flashbang when they get a kill and uh, around a dead foe, whether it is an NPC or a player. So if you kill somebody, uh, the you have four pieces of this gear and it basically flashbangs and blinds people. And so this gear set was labeled blind and had a gear score of 268, uh, which we'll talk about in just a minute, but it it seems like they're bumping up the gear score. Not all the gear scores, they all had different gear scores on them, so I don't know if they're actually bumping up the gear score, but it seems like some of the gear score were higher, which means that you would probably get a higher gear score if you did a higher level mission and stuff like that. Anyways, the next one I saw was Frontline, but I was told that it may not make it into 1.3 due to the working of the main perk, which is using an SMG with a ballistic shield, which seems a little OP. Uh, I remember back uh, early on in 1.1 that there was a bug where you could use an SMG with a ballistic shield and it was insane. People were just absolutely owning with it and so this one might not make it into 1.3. I think they're working on some uh, some details on it or something like that but I heard that it could be in 1.3. It could not be in 1.3. We'll see what happens when 1.3 is released. And finally the next one was called Firecrest and it was pretty much the one that I saw that was the most OP and will pretty much be the new standard in Dark Zone play if it goes in as it is. So this set gives you a plus three when you have two pieces, two incendiary rounds. So you get a plus six. Uh, so you get six total incendiary rounds that you can use. It gives you, uh, when you have three, it gives you 100% reload speed. And when you get a kill, if you have four pieces, 
uh, you will get incendiary rounds for the next 10 seconds if the player that you killed is on fire. So what that means is that you can actually chain together multiple people over and over again if you are using like incendiary rounds and you kill someone and uh, you kill someone again and you kill someone again in the next 10 seconds. As long as you're killing people, you're just going to get that incendiary round refresh and it just sounds like it's going to be insane because incendiary rounds are really powerful right now and a lot of people use them and a lot of people cry when other people use them so the set was labeled gear score 240 so we'll see what happens and we'll see you know what where this goes but uh the great thing and a lot of people that i've seen uh posting videos on this miss this one key fact and that was the new weapons that they have coming out and the the one thing that really got to me was i saw one weapon and it was automatically equipped to the player and it was called a blind battle rifle and the one thing that really stood out is that with the blind battle rifle, uh, let me see, uh, it had a new 229 weapon, which or actually the para, uh, the paratrooper SVD was 229, the blind battle rifle was 204, and yes, the one weapon labeled the ba blind battle rifle in the inventory, but not, not really know what it was, so it, it seemed like it was a class weapon. Now, uh, the perks directly attributed to and co were complementary to the blind gear set, so in this case, the major perk for the battle rifle was was called distractive and did 100% damage to blind and deaf targets. Now that's insane. So now you have four pieces of this uh, this set piece and you have a battle rifle that goes along with it. And if you kill someone, it flashes everybody and automatically your damage is boosted by 100%. So if you have, you know, 250,000 DPS, you're now you now have 500,000 DPS against those. It's going to be insane against like PVP and stuff like that or large bosses. So so uh, if you throw out your uh, flashbang grenade, you're going to see a 100% increase if you have this battle rifle. And even if you don't have the gear set, you can still have this and use your uh, flashbang. So that is pretty awesome and sounds pretty OP to me. And the other one that I saw uh, that they had was the paratrooper SVD. I did not look at the perks on it because I was too much uh, thinking about the blind battle rifle, so I really didn't see it. Uh, I'll have to go back and see if I can get in tomorrow and see if I can get any more pictures of it. So that was that. So that is something to look forward to and will definitely make gear that you have more dependent on your set pieces rather than just having an SMG and an M1A only. So let's move on to uh, the missions and how you kind of get underway. And the missions are random, like you said, but you get on a subway car, you run up to the platform, uh, you press X and hold X and you get onto the subway car and the subway car takes you to a place where you get dropped off and you get a mission briefing with uh, Paul Rhodes, uh, Mr. 9-11 first responder himself, Roy Benitez, or even Faye, I wish I was out there loud. So these dungeons are full of enemies. The harder the difficulty, uh, the more there are. And they really, uh, they're not really higher level, just more of them more aggressive, as I said before. And so there are also environmental hazards, uh, which is different than we have seen before. Uh, we have seen some of these and I'll show you, uh, see if I can pull up a, a clip of this but you know we we when we went through with the cleaners and stuff they had the little fire bombs and stuff like that that went off when you got close to them but these were kind of different like i saw like flamethrowers shooting out of the wall uh there were a couple like pulse uh, electronic pulses that disrupted you and made it so that you couldn't use any skills and you had to destroy them uh, and stuff that, that made you really have to be on your toes and keep watching out for them. And the range of the flame traps and the pulse beacons that stop you from using the abilities, it wasn't like super huge. It was probably turret range, but you still want to keep an eye out for those. Now, within each of these, like the Dark Zone, there were chests uh, that I saw that had goodies inside of them. The ones I saw had 182 uh, high-end items, which let's face it no one really needs these anymore uh you know they're just crafting materials and money inside them so hopefully they you know put something other than useless gear inside of these and that you know the chests will have greens or something like that you know the minty greens and stuff like that but you know from what i've seen in the dark zone it's unlikely that they're going to do that there'd just be 182 crafting materials inside so 
Okay, so hopefully I will see the new incursion soon, which is called Dragon's Breath, and we can do a review of that. But until then, this is Mounty Curl. That's been my time. Uh, I have been here for another Division Let's Talk at E3. If you found this video helpful, drop a like on it and consider playing the Division again. Uh, please come back. I personally have gold, so I'll be playing this, and uh, I'll be playing this on day one. I have the gold edition of the Division, so... Uh, I have I, I am forced to play the expansions because I paid for them up front and I so far I am not disappointed uh, at what I've paid for uh, a lot of people are a lot of people are mad a lot of pe at the just the incursions but now that we're getting into the paid content I think a lot of people are actually going to be happy that they paid for the gold and they didn't wait so they, this is this may restore the faith in Ubisoft and, and their games uh, unlike uh, what I saw yesterday and when I played the new game Ghost Recon game. I was very disappointed. It was very sad, uh, and it really crushed my dreams as to whether or not I'm going to get that. And I'm definitely not going to get that. At least, at least not at this point. Anyways, moving on. Or mo not even moving on. We're gonna close out this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you'll see my attempts on day one to get through these new missions with a passion. Lots of good stuff coming down the line for the division, and you do not want to miss it. So thank you all for watching. We will talk soon, and we will see you next time on the Division Let's Talk for Gun Brothers Gaming. Agent out.